In today's video, we actually have positive evidence that spot reduction might be possible. What's going on guys? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com coming to you on Saturday afternoon and it's uh, it's been a great week. Maybe I'll get you guys some video footage. My kitchen actually got installed. My phone is ringing. So my kitchen actually got installed, not the whole thing. The bottom cabinets and the countertops are installed and as well as like the cooktop. So I'll show you guys a little footage of the inside of the kitchen. I mean, not having a kitchen for like three months now has been uh, stressful, but seeing like how it's going to look, I now know it was worth the, the wait, which is something I've said all the time. If we're going to have this kitchen for the next 20 years, then what's another couple weeks, but whatever. So what I want to talk about today is spot reduction, something we all wish was possible, right? Spot reduction is basically the idea that, okay, so I've got a little body fat on my stomach. If I just exercise my stomach by doing lots of cable crunches and, and leg raises and, you know, core work, then I'll get leaner in my stomach revealing it. But all research up until this article that I just saw in the mass publication pointed to the fact that that was not possible. The only way to spot reduce fat on your body was to reduce overall body fat until such time as the body fat in that area got used which we all know wherever your most stubborn area is on your body that's the area you want it to come off the most it's just life we all know people that have abs all the time but they're not happy because they have a lot of fat on their legs their legs don't get lean and vice versa um, so we all have stubborn areas and we wish we could get those stubborn areas to get a little bit leaner but this study was interesting and so if you guys aren't familiar, MASS is the Monthly Application of Strength port, Sport, and it's put together by uh, Eric Helms, Greg Knuckles, Mike Zordos, some awesome peeps, and this is the next issue. So, if you click the link below in my description box and go and you want to get a subscription, all the money that I get from this, from this affiliate link, I am donating to USF Exercise Science Department, and I've already got several hundred dollars, so thank you guys who have got the subscription through me because it's going to go back into the scientific community. I don't want the money. I don't feel it's something that I've earned. I just want to give you guys information, share it, and then I'm going to give more money back to USF and uh, so we can do some more research and have some cool articles to talk about and learn more about the human body. But let's talk real quick about this study. So the subject involved in the study had a pretty high BMI up to like 30. And so they were also inactive and they were also female, okay? So we're talking about inactive, and I think in the, in the research they discussed less than an hour of activity considered exercise per week, which is pretty inactive for most of us. So these people were put through a program, and it was pretty neat how they broke it up. They did resistance training followed by a half an hour of either upper body cardio or lower body cardio, right? And they wanted to see if the specific group the upper and the lower, would have a difference in fat mass in the area, and there was. There was a difference, okay? So the group that did the upper body workout with the upper body cardio, I think they were like a hand pedal bike, they actually had a decrease in upper body fat mass, right? Both groups lost about the same amount of total fat mass, but the upper body training group had more fat loss in their upper body, the lower body group had more fat loss in the lower body. So let's talk about what this means because all of the research before this has, has not shown this. But this was a pretty unique setup and it's discussed a little bit uh, in, the, in the Mass article about why this might be. And what I found interesting was the idea was that they worked out, they did their resistance training, right? And it was supervised and then they did their cardio after. This is much like what we prescribe for physique athletes. Now granted, 
Physique athletes aren't 30 BMI. We're not looking to lose a little bit of body weight. We're looking to get that last bit of stubborn body fat off us, right? So for physique athletes, you know, it's the glutes, the hamstrings, the lower back, the abs, all the really stubborn areas. But anecdotally speaking, something I've always noticed in the past, when I get really lean, if I do a really good ab workout, right, get a really good pump and, and then go do some cardio, I always feel like the next day, my abs look very sharp. Now, completely anecdotal, data point of one, but when I want my abs to look my best, this is something I practice, including the day before a show. I'll actually do a little ab session and a little bit of cardio. Now, why would that matter? For those of us that are kind of familiar with like exercise science and how the body works, we know that adipose tissue that surrounds the muscles can release fat, right, for fuel. But if it doesn't get utilized, it can get restored. So what's potentially interesting here is the fact that you locally exercise an area, right? And you exercise it and possible adipose tissue gets released into that area and into the blood. And the cardio subsequently allows those fats to be used for fuel, right? Oxidation. So it's possible that there is some merit here. And I love the idea that they're looking at all the old research now and going, okay, how was this study design set up? Because Yes, we're never gonna be able to do a bunch of sit-ups and have shredded abs, okay? That's gonna come down to being very low body fat, to seeing your core lean. But I think there may be some benefit here to looking at, okay, what could we do to peak properly, to look our best? Yeah, so I just feel like there, there may be some application here for the end of contest prep when you're actually looking to like really get body fat off the last bit of your body, right? So how can we make sure and one good way to possibly do that might be to localize some training and cardio to make sure that we're getting that adipose tissue used up for fuel and then kind of burning it off. So doing some protocols where you're actually focusing on training an area and then immediately doing cardio after that. Who knows? I don't want to have too much conjecture here. Again, when you're talking about ultra lean athletes, which is typically where the people that I deal with get to that are concerned about spot reduction might be interested in just getting that. Hell, even I get hyper-focused on glutes and hamstrings as a natural bodybuilder when I got on stage. When you turn around at a natural bodybuilding show, that's where the show is won because you know that getting lean from the front, um, everyone can do that, but getting lean from the back, sometimes that takes another six of eight weeks of dieting when you're already shredded. And uh, it's, it's something that just happens over time. And so I don't know how much impact that would have, but it would be interesting to think if you've got some stubborn body fat, we can focus on like after a really good lower body session, doing some steady state cardio just to ensure that any adipose tissue that was kind of released for fuel during training can kind of be used and burned up and then not restored back in the same area, okay? Who knows? Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me today. It's Saturday. I've got clients at NPC Universe, and i got to get caught up with them. And it's Saturday, man, and it's the 4th of July weekend. So I hope you guys are out having fun, getting ready for some family vacations. It's a little cloudy out today. Hoping to jump in the pool with my little man, but we will see. And if not, I'm going to hit the gym and maybe have some pancakes. Thank you, guys. Please be sure to check out Mass, the monthly application of strength sport three of my favorite people in the fitness industry putting out real information based on real research and applying it in a way that you can easily digest it. And if you're like me, it just makes you want more, makes you hungry for more information. Hell, that's why I'm back in school because I got to know this stuff. All right, guys, you have a great day and I'll talk to you on Monday. Oh.